In our last video, we ran through the browse module. This video takes us to the next step where we start to process the image. This video is part of our series of tutorials on how we can use all the tools that On One Photo Raw has to offer. I have also included a set of timestamps in the description. If you're just looking to use a specific section of the develop module, the timestamps are down there for you to use. We have also chosen this picture to edit in the browse module and simply click develop button. Okay, let's start with the crop tool. Now you can grab the corners and pull them in. And it's as simple as that to crop. Now this is set as a free transform. We can, by the left hand top menu, we can look at different access ratios. Uh, and there's a few here for you to choose. And it's very simple to use. Pressing enter applies the crop. Now onto leveling the image. Now again, we can do this in a couple of ways. We can grab the corner and you see the little icon up here and simply rotate the picture from there. You can also use the slider in the top bar. And again, it's just simply rotates the picture. Uh, the best one uh, and the one I use the most is the level tool. And it's simple as click something that's straight, usually the horizon, and it'll automatically straighten the picture for you. Again, pressing enter applies the, the crop and the straightening. Now, if you don't like what you've done, you can reverse it by, by command and Z on a Mac and control and Z on a PC. Next in the toolbar on the left hand side is the local adjustments and the graduated filters. I will make a complete video on this subject because it's a wonderful tool but there is a lot to it and it warrants its own video and this picture doesn't really need it so we're going to move on from that and go to the perfect eraser. Now the perfect eraser is the tool we want if we need to remove a large object. Let's say that this building here is we don't want it in the picture. It's simply highlight the area you want to be removed and it's going to think about it and there we go it's made a pretty good job of removing that area now the retouch brush just below is for very small areas like blemishes on skin and it's it's great for portraits because you have control over the opacity so you can just try and mellow maybe a spot out or remove it completely now let's jump over to the right hand side of the screen we have nav controls so, so we have this is the view and let's say if you scroll on the mouse you can zoom in to look around the area you can grab the box in the nav area and simply drag it round and you can highlight the area where you want to view and next is the histogram a great tool um, but I'm gonna make a complete video on this again because this will make this video very long if we included uh, all the things that histogram can do and the third is the info and this is directly uh, from the browse module now on to processing the picture uh, in the tone and color panel on the right we have an auto button so let's click and see how it does and it's done a pretty good job um, but we want to do it manually so again command Z to return and we'll adjust each one individually now I'm sure you already know what the exposure sliders and, and contrast do but what I would say is that I don't use the contrast slider I use the white and black separately it just gives you that little bit more control over uh, the, the the contrast by using these two sliders. If you hit Alt and J, you will activate the clipping warnings. I always have this on to keep the highlights in check. I can use the highlight recovery slider for the blown out areas. We can recover a little bit. There we go. And that's done. Now these areas that are blue, let's up the blacks a bit more so you can see them. Are saying that there's it's losing detail in that area and it's too dark again you can try and recover it with the recovery button which doesn't always work 
you just have to adjust the blacks a little bit just to take them out but the black is a personal preference blown out whites uh, don't print at all um, but a dark area it's artistic license of how you want your photograph onto the color section again there's uh, an auto button uh, which does a reasonable job it hasn't changed it much uh, but i prefer again to adjust it myself and i think just warming up this image a little bit double clicking on the actual uh, title of the slider will set it back to zero so if we turn that right up double click temperature it goes back to zero and if we just give that a little bit of a warm uh, i think that will do us if this was a portrait there's a button here which we can reduce the vibrance on the skin again we're not doing a portrait so it doesn't matter on this picture now the purity the highlights reduces the saturation in the highlights and the shadows uh, again it just reduces the saturation in the shadows now if you like the adjustment you've done you can go to this icon here and create a save preset so let's name the preset village one and we're going to place it in emotive training if you want to uh, create a new category it's at the top right there but we're going to leave it in emotive training and we're only going to use the develop settings so these these settings here that we've just adjusted and press ok now on the left hand side we have a motive training and there we go village one so if we go to any other picture and we want to apply those adjustments straight onto it village one's there ready to go so that's the basic adjustments done now there are some more adjustments we can use in the show more button but i think we're going to save those for another video so you've got a reference library of videos you can refer back to when you need to so now we want to export the image. The bottom right hand corner, you have export. So photo size. At this point, you can change how big the picture is going to be exported. There's several options of how you want this to, to happen. I use the longest edge. So if I'm having a 20 by 16 made, a longest edge, 20 inch, it just makes it very, very easy file type so we want it to be printed out as a jpeg and we want full quality and at this point we can also attach a color profile now the location it's going to be sent to will just make it easy it's going to my desktop and we can also after export open it in finder if we wish so do we want to change the file name so this is where this, the section where this can be done and it's really easy at the moment it's current name so let's say we want to change that we can remove current name altogether or if we just want to add after the current name some text and let's just put village and maybe at the end we want to have sequential because we're going to be printing out a few of them it would start at 12 by putting 12 in the box there and there we go it's exporting so one photo is exported and there was no errors now if you want to share the image then just below the export button there's a share button and we have facebook twitter there's quite a few options you can even send it in a message if you wish so there we go guys, a quick basic guide on how to use the main develop screen. Our next video will be going into black and whites and the tools that we use to, to create some awesome black and whites using on one row. This video was of any help or you liked the video, please comment, like and subscribe.